not going to do any intro. If you were with us on part one, you already know what we're talking about. And if you weren't there, please see part two. I'll post it here later. Okay, so we're talking about Africa today and the way the, the continent was set up. What is happening today? Who is actually our enemy? Are we our enemy or is it someone else that we should be looking at? Because people are constantly saying the West has positioned us in this way so that we're weak and they can take advantage of us. Are they, should we still be blaming them? Because people are still blaming them today. What do you say? Izzy, should I start with you? Okay. Um, no. Um, current, presently, I don't think we, we, we are in no position to blame anybody for our predicaments. Um, take, for instance, the just concluded elections. Before someone comes into power, whether good or bad, you must have made up your mind of what to do. If you're here to steal the public funds, you have that at the back of your mind before you get into power. So blaming the West at this point in time, although they have a role to play, but the love of the people is should be your priority coming in to lead the nation. Um, for instance, take the issue of this certificate forgery thing coming up. We know <laughs> that the West, the West is aware if certificates were forged right from the onset. But what do they do in Africa? They let you get into power and then they know you have this case, they don't release it because somewhere along the lines, they need to hold you by the balls to do their bidding. So why are we actually blaming the West? This is a game they've played time and time and time again. We know that this is their modus operandi. They will definitely come back to it. They will not let the good person get in because they will not get what they need out of Africa. So what do they do? They allow the bad person win. Did they know that if they brought up these things before then, it would have deterred this guy from contesting? Definitely. But they allow you getting because somewhere along the line, they would, you know, dangle it in front of you. You either do this or this is out there. But the problem like Trump is and not Russia. the West. Exactly. Now, the problem is not the West. <laughs> the problem is the person coming in. Why are you coming in? Why are you coming in based on lies? Do you think these guys know that you have these issues and then they will just watch you folding their hands, call you to congratulate you? There's a reason. What is the aim of you not being sincere, trying sincerely trying to develop your nation like those nations you've visited in the past? You've had dealings, you've had court cases that you had to pay fines for. If you're innocent, you don't have to pay those fines. But they know that these things will come up. They just hit them. The problem might lie with the West, but we make room for the West to come in. If it's only good, credible people that are coming up, what would the West hold against us in the future? But what we do at the end of the day is that the bad guys come up, play right into their hands, and then we end up crying and blaming the West. Why did we not blame the African man? Take the issue of the slave trade. They came, they bought slaves from Africa. Who sl sold slaves to them? He was a fellow African. That's exactly what we're dealing with in Africa. It's someone amongst us that will sell his brother or sister or someone from another community to a white man for financial proceeds. That's the same thing with the politics of today. Guys, can you can I just quickly say something? Because um, please, something just occurred to me. All along, I've been fighting in my mind. Why are you doing this? Um, because when you get into that position, you are going to be taken advantage of. They're going to just say to you, jump, and you're going to say how high. It means that you're going to sell us. But something just occurred to me now as Izzy said this thing. Um, if I were that person, I would actually be worried. I would, I would see, yes, these people can tell me to do anything and they can take advantage of me and my country. And I'm okay with it because I, I know that I also have, I have a lot to gain. But now, I'm actually now thinking if I were in those shoes, I should be worried because these people can set me up. Has, has any of you thought about that? You know, they can actually- Power intoxicates. Power intoxicates. 
speak, Nigeria and maybe some African countries are highly compromised by the fact of the person that occupies the IS office in their country. No, even he himself is Nigeria, a uh, Nigeria is already compromised. Do you understand me? That was what we were trying to avoid. Do you understand me? If you don't have any skeleton in your cupboard, there's so much that the West can do. The worst they can do is organize a coup. Dispose of you. Form of, yeah, some form of uh, let something yeah. fall, fall you. They can mm -hmm. do it. CIA has done it in many African countries. They've ousted mm -hmm. presidents and, you know, so they've done that. They've sponsored coups so that because the person they want, uh, the person that will do their bidding is only in office. The person there does not want to do their bidding and they will sponsor a coup. They'll, they'll, they'll create a narrative. They'll sponsor it in the media and it will get done. And Nigeria, uh, Africans are gullible enough to go out and shout, hey, hey, hey. do you understand? So that, that's even not the, the issue now. What I see is that the first setup for Africa and Nigeria was uh, the setup in 1885, which was the Berlin Conference. That was when Africa was partitioned and shared. And sometimes I laugh. People who are coming to, you know, to take advantage of you can sit down at a table and decide that, okay, this one belongs to you. This one belongs to you. Say, no, 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 it doesn't belong to you. No, 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 we have to share it. That's okay, no problem, we'll share it. And they didn't fight. And it has been difficult for us for almost 70 years for us to come together and say, look, let's do something that will protect our own interest in Africa. It's, a, it's actually laughable. And what they did was that, that was, that was the beginning of colonialism. Mm -hmm. But from the moment they gave independence, you understand me, new colonialism started. Because the truth about it is, as we speak, we are still being colonized. We, it's yeah. not just obvious. It's not just obvious. No, it's now very glaring in 2023. Well, <laughs> to you, to you, but to how many people? Because when people are arguing on some of the problems that we have, yes, I mean, I agree that uh, to a very large extent, there's so much that we can do about it as a people. But the issue is that there is constant interference, there's constant uh, uh, bullying, there's constant everything negative towards the African continent. And what I say to them is that whenever any African country, if you notice, whenever any African country seem to have a good leader that seem to be pointing that country in the right direction, something horrible always happens. Do you understand? Something horrible. And those are the things that we Africans are supposed to be awake to. Now we know. Yeah. Now you, you think you know. <laughs> you if if people you think you know, but how we don't if doesn't people, mean they haven't heard, if, doesn't if, mean nobody if, has ever said yes, to them. If the majority of the people know, they will never let somebody like Tinumbu get into office. The best way to control because a population they, to yeah, believe your narrative yeah, is make because, them poor. Yes, yeah, because, yeah, because so the, the struggle, struggle now is on what to eat. We don't know yet. Yeah. You know. So you know, they, if if they if they know, they will not let somebody like that, somebody that compromised, with documented compromise, not some not ESA. They will not because the moment your president is compromised, your nation is compromised. He will agree they to know. think that he would. They know to... these are people who are evil in their minds. Okay. That's that's the thing. They know because the, I okay, even know people mind. here. I know people here. I know people here in the US and here. Who, yeah. who are not hungry. They're not hungry, but because maybe they have their eyes set on something else. So they do know. They know That's everything. That they are greedy. It's because poverty. they're selfish. Poverty, poverty, poverty is not... Poverty is okay, not... Okay, poverty is not about wealth. money. Not people, about are money. People, are more, people are more ignorant. People are more ignorant. People are actually more ignorant. The ignorance is not deliberate sometimes. The ignorance is shielded by ethnic sentiments, religious yes. sentiment and yes. other sentiments and but, ambition yeah, ambition but, can be one yeah, those are few those are few yes. See, let me let me give you an example how many people let's give you a very good example how many people of all the people that that are supporting the man there now 
how many people are actually very close to him? Maximum 10,000. We're talking about a country of millions. Mm -hmm. Majority are ignorant. Whether yes. something is causing their ignorance or oh. not, Okay. The, the ones who are taking advantage, they are... They are and the, then the bias is... And the bias yeah, is the from is, the ethnic yeah, and religious bias. Yes. ignorance. They don't actually... They don't have a full grasp of the enormity. <coughs> you understand me? But I, I, I'll, I'll say this. In all fairness, you know, in all fairness to the population that... I know you've said 10,000 people at the most are... Uh, Really, people that were rooting for uh, psychophants, more or less, Around not even rooting yeah. for yes. To gain. The rest of the population have actually lost count of how many millions we are in that country. Two hundred seven million. Yes. So remove that. We're still on two hundred and seven million because the ten thousand is just a fraction on top. Yeah. Um, in all fairness to the two hundred and seven million Nigerians. Yeah. The major, not even a tiny majority, the vast majority of them are awake. What we saw, what we witnessed was something we'd never seen in our lifetime, where a Yoruba man would vote for an Igbo man. You know our history, you know, in that country. Now, because during that time last year, before the election, I happened to be in Nigeria and I used to go to Balogo, Jankara, downtown, you know, market. And I was doing my own little foot soldier campaign, funny enough. Not by, because those are, are trenches. You don't go to a Yoruba man, you know, of that level of intelligence to say, uh, vote for. And they, they will actually look at you, you're doing this because you're Igbo. So my own way of campaigning then is, you know, I always get into these conversations and say to them, ah, who you want vote for, madam, or oh, Gaza? And I'll just say, ah, if I want vote to, no look at tribal, religion, no whatever, just vote for the right person. You've said it all, okay? Anyway, moving forward from that, the vast majority of Yorubas, I have to say this, and even Northerners, did vote for this man because... The the, 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 the the message was clear. We got it through, which is we're not looking at sentiments. Oftentimes, I'll say that these Aosa Malams and the Yoruba, you know, the low down, you know, ones there. I will always say to them, the price of rice or, or the price of bread, or, it is not cheaper in Yoruba land than it is in the East. You know, that message cut across and they voted. The people that are downfall in that country, it's not even the, the I, I wouldn't want, I, I think I'd be very, very unfair to say they know and they put him in there. Nobody put him in there. It is those, well, it's my profession. I don't want to refer to them as silly judges, but it is those greedy judges. <laughs> yes, if my national platform have been almost excommunicated, that the, the only thing remaining for them is to exit me and they know they can't because of my views there, because on the national platform, there's so many judges there. There's so many sons there. Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, you name it. So they don't like my radical views of telling them the truth, that the judiciary is rotten. It is, is it? The, the rotten judiciary that put Tinimbu in there for their own, like Uzo said, personal gain, okay? It is not, I think we need to be clear on this, it is not the masses in Nigeria. I mean, when we go home, is a Yoruba driver that drives off. Yes, I know there might be an element of, let me just say, these people are my guys before they sack me, but I doubt it. If you, if, if, you, if, you, if you had the opportunity of actually being in Nigeria from that last year to, you know, just this other day that they did the election, you would see that the country had or has tremendously shifted from being tribalistic in nature. There, of course, we still have the tribalism. Well, we when people. I knew that times had changed was when my friend, same age bracket with me, her parents are in their 80s, Yoruba, core Yoruba people, actually said they were voting for P2B. Now, for me, that was when I knew that we cleared grounds because Yoruba people, that generation is unthinkable. Perhaps the younger ones that have been good with Igbo, but those ones coming from that Akintola era of your Igbo, your Haosa, your saying, living through the war, that they will vote for an Igbo man. The revolution, the change is there. All we need is, you see, sadly, 
um, I hate to predict this, but the only thing that will turn things around in that country is a revolution. But then you ask, who's ready to spill whose life? My dear. <laughs> No, but then it's true because Nothing it's just a few mean. set of people, you know. It's yeah. just it's just like like he was saying, it's just it's just like ten thousand they're, they're not more yeah. than ten thousand people controlling the whole country. It's true. But then those are the thing is who wants to die? You you saw the answer SARS riot. I don't as know. Soon as I, I don't those know. Boys. What as I soon as they shot those boys, end of story. A uh, hundred and something. And they denied it. Yes, they yeah. did. And, and, and I have to know. say this. Let, let, talking about people that have sold their, their souls to the devil. Um, also, you may not remember him. He was in law school with us. He apparently right now, he's doing so well for himself. He happens to be related to, well, not related. That's in associations with all these Tinimbu them, Sawu Ulu them. He's, uh, he, went to, he went to your uni. Do you know that in one of those my critical pieces that always yeah, load down on the national true. platform? Eh? Do you know he actually called me? He was one of the people because he felt, oh, I know Coco. And he called me offline to actually caution, not caution me as in, don't you dare, but you know, as Papali, I, I stop this, your war against our, uh, you know. And we got talking, and I was like, I will never drop my pen to our uh, judges do the right thing. Guess what? We got talking, and he said something that has made me not pick up my phone to call him again. Because we were talking from time to time. And what did he say? He actually, we got talking about a lot of things in the country, and he actually mentioned these boys that they killed that they took it. And he said, Coco, no such thing. It's a lie. It never happened. And I was like, you can't be tell. So, you see, why can't I call him again or have a conversation? Because he's no longer that person that was my friend in law school. I don't yeah. recognize him. He has changed. Many of them are like that. And that is because of the money. He was actually one of the counsels in court for the Lagos state government. Do you do you know how many of my classmates, how many of my <laughs> classmates I have cut off in the in the last one and a half years? I believe you. I have cut off I would just go a lot of them who have my friends on when when I, I don't cut off people because of their views. You know yeah. I, mean? I cut them yeah. off because of their obvious stupidity. Yeah, you understand yeah. me. I call it. I call them up. I don't. I don't mind you having a different view from me. Certainly. My from, I don't have any problem. But when I see what is, what is obviously wrong, if you come to me and say yeah, this is wrong, yeah, and you're trying to make amends for it, I can understand that. We all sometimes do that. But when you now I start, mean, by, when you now start this... behind what is wrong, yeah, and, and he was actually. It, in that conversation, prior to when we got it, he was actually telling me the properties he has abroad. In America, in the UK. And I was thinking, you must be some powerful lawyer to have all of these. Because I can't think of one lawyer in Nigeria. Okay, maybe one house in the UK or America, but strings. Yeah. And that was, you know, when he mentioned his connection with Saul, how he was amongst the, the lawyers that defended the Lagos state government, at that point, I knew where the source of wealth came. And he was swearing that the toll gate thing never happened. It did. It came out I, recently. I, at, at that point, it, it, this is how bad it was for me. I, I don't think the conversation between me and him was like for over an hour. But once we got to that topic, I don't think we lasted for more than three minutes afterwards, after he said it yeah. never happened. Mm -hmm. I because I knew he wasn't the person that we question. used to interchange has, business in those days, post law school, dreaming of what we wanted to be. And you know, in those early days, he was now someone I couldn't recognize. recognize. Yeah, and I couldn't like that. I like that. Yes, I ju my right. conscience just couldn't allow me associate with him anymore. And he was someone I was going to invite for my party had I met him before that time. <laughs> I went home. Yes, I went home to Nigeria. You know, just we just we just got back a few weeks ago. I couldn't call him. I just couldn't establish re-establish a relationship. Yeah, if you no. have a conscience, yeah. So then, no, are we? Question. So, what is the future going to be like? 
because what is what that is exactly this, the same thing as the ones who sold their brothers and sisters into slavery and that is exactly what it is right now yeah so like i came to the conclusion that coco came to that it's not going to change unless somebody does something drastic and the reason why it'll be hard for someone to do something drastic is because people are sold to having faith that something is going to change even though after 20 years and 50 years and the whole of the mother's and father's lifetime it didn't happen and that we're going to have patience because it has become a habit to wait and to hope that something positive is going to happen even if i don't really do anything about it and somebody will say why are you sitting over there and saying that i'm saying it because if i were there right now if something is happening in my house, I mean, I can't expect everybody to be like-minded. But I'm like, there are many of you, it's like, what is the point of living if you're not living? What? You're, li you're the oh. living dead. Oh. My, my take here, uh, my take is that uh, whatever is going to happen has to start from what happened during the last election. Like Coco... Uh, yeah, more but like, today the narrative is a thousand two hundred. More like no, more like explain. That's those are those are symptoms of bad governance. Yeah, you understand. Those are not the main mm -hmm. issues, but they are symptoms of mm -hmm. bad governance. You understand me? There are examples of why. I mean, the reason why we are where we are. But what I wanted to say was that what Coco said earlier uh concerning what happened during the last election I, I totally agree with you that was what happened but we still had a lot of people who were supporting this other guy who is there now mm. they were supporting him based on several things not even the fact that they could get something out of it so and what mm -hmm. i see a lot of people they just join a bandwagon and support on the platform of ignorance mm. you understand me? yeah i wish they did not but they did so we still have those clicks or those those volumes inside the populace but what i say what from what coco said what happened during the last election we need to we need to continue to engineer it to the point where it becomes stronger mm. it's not only it's not only uh, during election you want to rewrite their dna mm. yes we need to grab yes we are we, we no the last election did a lot we need yes to build, yes you need see you you are in a you are in a battle no 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 not it but you are in a war you might have lost a battle but there are still many battles to fight mm -hmm. we must we must build on what the country nigeria must build on what we're able to achieve where there's more like a cross pollination yes of people in terms of supportership of a particular candidate that we felt, yes that we believed will do a better job in that office than the person that is there. We all know, everybody around the world knows that. They will know who won the election. But because the system that we have there has been so entrenched, the, the, law, the lawless system, the system of impudence, you understand me, that has been there, is so entrenched that it's so difficult to uproot. But the truth about this is that some of us still have about 30 years to live on this earth. We still have our children who have several uh, ten, tens of years to live. So we cannot, whether we, even if our children are here with us, we still have plenty of relatives. You mm -hmm. understand me at home. So basically we, we mm -hmm. cannot stop. We got to en encourage. That's on the look on the Nigerian scene. Then Africa, whatever, um, what do you call is try was trying to do, Gaddafi. That needs to be done. There has to be a way of insulating Africa from the influence of the Western of the world. Western because world. that influence exactly. is still present and is still strong. And for as long as you have greedy ones amongst us who mm -hmm. are only thinking about themselves and their family or their generations unborn alone, not generally thinking about the well-being of the country, they will always have their way. Because all they need to do is get in touch with a couple of them who are in who are who hold state offices and who have resources and who are well positioned to perpetuate anything that they want to perpetuate. So, first of all, we need what um Gaddafi wants to do 
needs to find from on the from the context of Africa. Then from the context of Nigeria, we need to continue what has happened. We have been set up. We have set ourselves up, but we also need to unset ourselves up. Actually, I want you guys to watch this video. This is another video that we have on our channel. And I will leave the description, I will leave the link in the description box under this video that you're watching now. I want you to watch this after you've watched the current one. And it takes a collect it, it, it takes more than oh just losing an election. No. It's a struggle. It's a it's a war. It's a daily, a yeah. daily one. Good, good, luck, good luck, Jonathan was was booted out because he refused to sign the gay rights um whatever movement does yeah. a, a gay you know that's what Obama actually sent his personal campaign manager to yeah. Nigeria Did to oversee that. Yeah. Was not in. yeah. And Buhari came in. <laughs> and you, you saw what Buhari did. Of all, well. of all people, of all people. <laughs> so, man, and yeah, I think our, our downfall pretty much started from when Good Luck left office. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we must stop. Yes. We must stop this mentality of thinking that the West is going to do anything Absolutely. that will save us as a people. They will not. They will only do things or agree to things or support things or sponsor things that will foster their interests. JF Kennedy's speech comes to mind, his inauguration speech, which is that America has no permanent friend nor enemy, yeah. but a permanent interest. interest. Inauguration speech. And uh, that's yeah, America, but it's the same for all, almost all the countries it, the yeah, it, yes, to, today. And that is exactly what they're doing. It is their interest, okay? Yeah. It is their interest. I mean, if you're a student of history, and I'm sure you all are, um, if you, you, you go back to the Nigerian Civil War, the classified documents show that at some point they were supporting the Biafra people yeah. because they felt we were going to win the war at that time. Yeah. You know, so this is the high commissioner here advising the government, oh, tilting towards Biafra. And as soon as they saw that ties were changing, the same him in those declassified documents, another set of declassified documents, said yes. tilting towards the or, Nigerian government. Or when, so he he shows you. when he realized that the queen did not hold the same position, mm. that's what happened. Because mm. the, the, British, the British executives were in support of the Nigerian government integrating the Biafra people. Mm. But the Queen was not in support of it. Mm. And that was what changed it. That was what changed mm. it. It was Queen. So when people talk about... Uh, I wrote something on, on one of my friend's pages on, uh, and everybody came at me when the Queen died. As I, I, I told mm. them, I, I told them, I, you don't know. And the person that was arguing with me was, was an evil person. So I was telling, mm. I was telling him that like, you don't know what this woman has done to your history. A, a couple, a couple of, a couple of people when did I, write I, against her because it's the whole British Empire thing, isn't it? The colonization. Yeah. Um, if you watch the Crown, you know, calling it, there's one episode where they were, and these are well documented things. Um, What's her sister's name? Margaret, Princess Margaret, referring to Africans. Which country was that as primitive? Um, she used a lot of, I can't oh, remember the yeah, other words yeah. now. Um, what's, what's the word? Words. Savages. Savages. That's uh, the word. Savages, yeah. Even my and, daughter, when, when she saw my comments, I think she followed my Facebook uh, reaction and she saw my. You know, children don't know what happened before. They are not. They are more concerned about the mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. level or that deep. And she said, "Ah, what happened, to Dad? Why did you say that about the Queen?" I said, "Well, you will soon know." No, but she, she she's someone because I'm I'm very in depth in these things. The so-called the crown jewel, her crown, and all that. Those are you know there was a massive outcry for them to return all our you know, yeah. diamonds and stuff on her crown. I um, mean, they yeah. did um, um, unspeakable things too. But, yes. you know, at the you end of the game... Them. You know, you can't blame good. them. Right? At the end of yeah, the yeah, day, you want to be... Own interest. Yeah, but we <laughs> need to start acting in our own interest now. Well, but with Tinubu there, how much of a chance do we have? 
our hands are tied. Tied. It's just like um, what's his name, Trump, in America. It seems like what on earth is wrong with you? He couldn't do anything because they he knows where they hold him, where they're holding him. And that's Tinibu, you know, initially in this conversation, we spoke about how they hold them. Tinibu can't do anything because they put him there. You think if they wanted him out, that that wouldn't have been made possible. Of course, it would have been made possible. Well, they need him. So, yeah. All right. They need him to be need stupid. Him to run us. And he's <laughs> very happy to do it. What has never, what Escopa could not achieve you in a mind. country he was literally ruling. You by every stretch of imagination, but that's what exactly. he could not achieve, Tinimpu achieved it in Nigeria. That's now that's a yeah. big wow. Yeah, being a president but, um, of a drug, but you know, imagine what our reputation is like now. But I you don't know, know if he realizes. I will say again that he's he's very he's very much at risk now, because not only will they, I'm not even thinking about that. They will use him. They will use him, eat him up, and spit him out. Because at the slightest chance, hmm? no, they wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not even concerned about him. They, they wouldn't even I'm, spit I'm, him I'm out because they need him. He, he knows damage. better. I'm concerned about the damage mm. Nigeria is now exposed to. Mm. Do you understand me? I'm concerned yeah. about the social, economic, and political damage that Nigeria is now exposed to. Because whenever you have a compromised person of as your leader, as the head of your government. Man, you are like a basket. Of course. I, I had, I as personally, my, my family and I personally had, and I'm talking about my young children, they're so patriotic. You think they've lived all their lives in Nigeria because that's the way I chose to bring them up. Do you know we had a five-year plan when OB, when when it was obvious that he was going to be the next president or so we thought. We had a five-year plan to relocate. The kids were so into going back to Nigeria. <laughs> you know? Yes, we did. And, and very, very seriously, we had it all worked out. You know, making taking them as often as we, we had that plan. But yeah. obviously, you know, because Nigeria was a place I could still believe in had he been in power, I knew it was going to go back to a country that we went back to when we were young, which is my father, a young lecturer, writing papers upon papers, finding, finding his way, dropping them off at Dodham Barracks at the gate. He didn't know anyone. The persistence of sending in these papers for them to set up something and eventually road safety it is great because of my father there's road safety commission in nigeria today although the nigerian factor still came into play they didn't give him the top job they gave it to wale soyenka a poet who how would a poet had my father read transport engineering here for christ's sake and it was always his dream i remember then as children he, he, driving he'll be criticizing, there are no road signs, there are no this, there are no that, there's no regulation, there's no... And after going from Owere, you know, literally every other month to Lagos, standing at that door, but you know what it is to go through to get there. When the papers finally was passed to the Dex, it was, they, 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 they didn't give it to him, they gave it to Wallace Yoinka. He licked his stores, still went back, continued writing. All I ever saw my father do growing up was just to write, a young lecturer. And because of him, we had this mass transit in Nigeria. Well, all the states, they have obviously embezzled their funds, but Imo State Transport um, Corporation still stands till yeah. today. You understand? Yes. Now, it, it what I'm saying is, uh oh <laughs> you never yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, no, my, my daughter was trying. Now, what I'm saying is, when people be gotten, and this was a corrupt government even then, but not as corrupt as this. When people be came, when we thought he was going to come in, I remember telling my kids this same thing that I'm going to be like that, my father, that young lecturer that believes it. If I write and write and write and give proposals one day for one day. It will get to the right hands and I'm going to be called in. And that was exactly my vision for saying, oh, I was going to relocate because I felt 
I better get in at the right time rather than when everyone would have taken their position. That's when I'll bring my papers and like too late. But obviously with him not being there, I can't go to Nigeria. I can't write an intellectual piece or whatever, come up with ideas Normal and they will pass through. You will not I will have to. <laughs> he will not. But you know, with Peter B, had he come into government, I would have stood a chance. Do you get my point? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it would have been easy to go to Asorok to drop it and it will get to him on the first day. No. It would probably be even more than a year or even years in the making. But it's all I know is that with, the there's structures in place, in place to more... say, yeah. I think you should have a look at this. Yeah, I think you should have a look at what there's one yeah, barista or whatever that is. Right. I think you should have a look at this, and that's how you get invited in because I know he's that sort of person. But obviously, go to Nigeria to go and do what? Where the littlest of if I tell you this, you people will not believe it. Our house that we just built last year, my husband's cousin is not like his Paul. When we were looking for the architect, just architect, so so architect, we haven't even gone on to the engineer to build the house to introduce us. Do you know he collected money to introduce us to the architect that designed his own house? His house mm -hmm. is not as old rock or just a house in VGC. Okay, he collected money from you to introduce you to the architects. How? Yes, that's how bad. I and this is not a hungry boy you know yeah. there's a difference between this is one driver that is really hungry you get my that is how bad nigeria is now the engineer actually told my husband he paid a certain percentage to this same guy ah. nigeria do you know that you cannot do any i had my birthday party last year my people that i called and these are my friends and they're doing well i'm not talking about imagine what is like in the hungry the hungry level do you know each of them and these are friends that you think ordinarily like before they'll say oh don't worry hey let me call my distant to help you yeah, have a cook they will go and collect a percentage wow to introduce a cook to you that would cater for the party that is how bad that's how, that. we, that's how we make money now wow <laughs> As me do, men. Gone are the days. If you think you're going to call anybody at home, it's just like me now to say to me, if you think that is a matter of, oh, I want to make clothes, and you say to me, Coco, do you know any good tailor? I'll tell you yes. Next thing, I'll go to my tailor and tell my tailor, do you know what I am bringing a custom? Mine is this, that, the, that. The, the, the truth is that, is that, the truth is that not, not everyone here is like that. The truth is that because what? you're coming from diaspora, there's this mindset no. of they have the money. It is, yeah. and most that is one don't do it to each other here. That's okay. no, no, no. I, I, most people no, no, here no. don't do it to each other here. No, no, we don't do it to each other. But trust me, in Nigeria, even if you're living in Nigeria, is the norm now. You know, yeah. in those days, remember, remember in Nigeria, you could just Nigeria ask a friend at home. You know, in Nigeria, in those days, you could just ask a friend, ah, Omo, do you know any tailor? Or do you know, yeah. And they'll say, hey, and they'll give out the number freely. It doesn't happen now. They'll tell you, hold on. And you'll be wondering, what's, what's, what's causing this little delay? Uh, I mean, as Uzo said, eh, we we were set up, you understand me, long time ago, and we continue to yes. be set up. Uh, and the to, way forward the question, is the question: mm -hmm. Who is actually against us? I I we dare ourselves. To, I dare to summarize that we are the ones against ourselves right now. Ourselves, yeah. I, yeah. I want to discount the other influence because those can can be taken care of if you are if if we live in unity. You understand me? If you are, if we are, if we work in unity, if we have unity of purpose, we can defeat those other influences that we talked about earlier. They are the Western world, uh, Western. Uh, we can uh, stop talking about them now. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If we can, as I said, try and do what do what we can do internally to change the leadership of the. the yeah, I know followership is also a problem in Nigeria. It starts from leadership, yeah. yeah. But leadership is a major problem. Le because what I say to people, I say I lived in the 70s. I lived in the 70s. I lived in the 80s. Yeah, even though we were not, we did not get it politically right, totally. But we were not anywhere this bad. <laughs> and we thought we were bad then. This bad. 
this this the the, the fabric of society is totally torn as we speak to, as we speak right now there's no societal cohesion there's nothing the economy is in tatters politically we have become uh, majority of people have become jobbers do you understand so everything mm -hmm. is totally wrong and so for us i think the way forward is for us to be able to push someone there that we know do everything we can and sometimes i was telling people during the election i said you want to take power from people who took power the way they took power who threatened everybody and you thought you will go i i think i've told you that too before you thought you would yeah. just go to the to the polling unit and they will not send thugs you go there with two by two plank when they see two <laughs> holding yeah, you two have by to speak the same plank. language yes. as the other person when you go there with two by two plank they see 200 people going uh, at the polling station or uh, polling unit with 200 uh, with pulling uh, two by two planks they will not come near you when you go there you do like uh, you wear your nicest shirt and then mm. because your life the way it is now for majority of people in nigeria your life is depending on it your livelihood is depending on it because obviously the government you've had for the past eight nine years has totally messed up your your country they have in 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 2000 our majority of nigerians our lives are yeah. not depending on it anymore our lives are depending february. on jack buying yeah 2015 mm. february the exchange rate was 188 and this is what made you believe that the, the government that kept it between 150 and 188 for okay. about 10 years, hold on, for about 10 years, did a bad job. And you come in for eight years, and you you, you more like gave it like about uh, my, my times 400%. And you think they will leave. No, they will not leave like that. So you've got to take it by the scruff of the neck. And maybe that is what this last election has taught a lot of people. That is I not going to be easy. We are very hopeful because from the way you're, you're, you're speaking, what I what I can say is that you're saying that this last election has stopped people and so the next election, that's that sounds like what you're saying. Yeah. But to me, the way I'm looking at it, the dollar is at 1,200 $1, today. Yeah. And so what I want to see is, I, I, I know that, like I, I always say that if I, were, if I were there now, I would explode just walking along the streets. So if by Christmas, the dollar is at 1,500 or more, if not near 2,000, I want to see how people are just going to continue like it's business as usual. Something more, something will happen. Something hmm? definitely will happen. Because what it I know will about have to life, be a revolution. It will have to be a revolution. Life, what I know about life is you keep on, until your cup is full, then it will start to overflow, you know? So you, we are getting to the point. So no problem. We're we are now getting to the tipping point. Let me just see how it's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, then it's just finished. Because I mean, for everything in life, you do 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 until the person decides now my back is against the wall. I can't go, I can't go through the wall. Yeah. I actually didn't think that we would wait until now, but I'm surprised I waited until now. But now that we're here, let's just see what happens in the next mm -hmm. few months. Anyway, so I think we should uh we should close this now because we've gone even beyond <laughs> what our topic was for this. And no. yes, very great contributions. Um, the people that it needs to reach. This kind of talks need to reach. Uh, those are friends who are not hungry. Those are friends who are not hungry. Because I know that the hungry ones are ready already. The ones who are not hungry, who are continuing to help to perpetrate this evil and yeah. for stuff like what we have now to continue to go on. They are the ones that they are the ones that need to listen to this. Because the amazing thing is that this stupidity that is blinding them, whether it's for ambition or for greed or whatever it is, the people you are trying to impress. I can't be impressed. You're only going to impress people like you, the same people like you. So you should give it up now because we no longer want to admire you and your stupidity and all your ill-gotten wealth. Those people are too hungry to admire you. Now it's only people like yourself that you've been impressing. Now all of you have the same thing. So who are you impressing at the end of the day? I mean, it's really... So, I, I have so many things to say, but... Uh... I was on a, I mean, just to say it short, I was on a platform, I mean, on a platform, I used to play cricket for my school and for the, for Nigeria before. And uh, I was, mm -hmm. old, old players platform that we had and somebody came and was, you know, somebody dropped a, a post 
that was talking about how they've crippled the economy and the exchange rate and all of that. And someone came, obviously, I've seen that he's a supporter of the current government and said, eh, well, Naira is just finding its correct value. I said, in fact, <laughs> if I punch him through the, through the, through the WhatsApp post, I would have done that. Can you imagine? He lives in Nigeria. And he's saying that the Naira is just finding its right level. Oh, my goodness. The one Naira to a dollar. And so those are the people. Those are the, our. Those are the people who are our pro, who are our problems. Clearly, they are the ones. Yeah. When they see evil, they still support it. They call me. You want a chancha? So I think okay. people should actually go online like, and, and start looking at those. And start, back, the people, if I if I was those people and I'm hungry, all those people that are supporting this madness, I will start making a list of their names. I will just start making a list of their names. Whatever you want to do with the list, I don't know, but me, I'll be making a list of their names. All right. He's not, he's not a young person. Somebody in his 60s that was said this. Sometimes I believe you, that. Sometimes my some friend people are the good times in Nigeria. Shocked. My friend shocked the hell out of me. He shocked, he shocked me so I'm much. Like that. Lying. Like that. But okay, anyway, me... the way forward for me <laughs> is... Um, just have conversations like this, the awareness that's spreading the awareness in any yeah. little platform that you belong to, any little group. Um, had the awareness not been spread, P2B had no business even having one vote, apart from votes from member of his family members of his family. But we did it. Never mind the rigging. I mean, P2B in this world, I mean, everything was stashed against him. Yeah, the most obvious being that he was even an evil man, truth be told. But then you saw how we were able to educate people on a factor of where you come from. Quite frankly, if he was a full an man, I would have voted for him. That's the truth. Yeah, I didn't vote for him because he's evil. Evils, you know, we're well known for being an articles. We're not going to vote for you because we're evil. You can see what we've done to many other people that have come before him because they were completely hopeless and useless. So if we're not known for any other thing, we're known for we don't support our own. Uh, yes, that's the way people want to interpret it. But it's not quite that we don't support our own. We don't support stupidity. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, we don't support stupidity. So the fact that he's evil, he, you dare not, as an evil man, want to ride on that sentimental you're my Townsman kind of thing. We'll throw you out in a heartbeat. And we've done that to many others before him. But and that's Ibo why majority of the, the evil leaders um um abandoned him. Yeah, they did. Yes. Majority of yes. them. Yes. But we didn't care about them either yeah. because we don't because want this. them. They, they're all sellers. I mean, there's no point. You see, we're we're far more educated up here that we know that. You, you cannot play the race card or the, the tribe that's card true. with an average evil that's man. Mm. With the Yorubas and the Hausas, I find that they easily play that card. And that's a tough time the Igbo so called leaders have with us because uh, we're ungovernable in the sense that you can't just come because you're Igbo and you think we'll give you a vote. Why? Uh, why do you deserve our vote? We're not voting for you out. We'd rather vote for that Yoruba or Hausa man that we feel okay. We think he might have our interest somehow. In mind rather than voting sheepishly for because he's evil, he's just going to sell you out. And I think with other tribes, and this is why these sort of conversations are good, they're just playing the catch up for them to know you don't have to vote for Tinibu because he's a Yoruba man, you don't have to, yeah, vote for him because you. And that was the way I chose to do my own little campaign in those days when I went home, vote for him because you believe he's actually going to change your life. He's credible, yes. He's credible. And for me, quite frankly, I'm not saying I mind that he just wants to change the lives of the average Yoruba man, but fine, if that's the reason why you want to vote for him, at least as a Yoruba man, you're getting something out of that sentimental kind of voting. But mm -hmm. here's the truth. You're not, you as a Yoruba man, you're not going to get anything out from him. It's just his cronies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The example is does, Lagos. You have yes. a vivid example in Lagos. Yeah. Talking about, I, I know it's right. Should yeah. I it right? <laughs> yes, yes. And then you can, yes. yeah. Okay. <laughs>
All right. Thank you for being with us on this episode. So we're just going to end this episode. Now join us for more next weekend. We'll be right here. If you don't know, uh, we are also on Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe on here. And then join a page on Facebook, Diaspora Lounge. Now I wish you a great week ahead. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye,